As a minister, when people realize that I'm a minister, they often say, will you say a prayer for me? And I will with pleasure. I love to pray with people. Sometimes I pray for them right in the moment and just stop and pray. But there's a second part of that question that sometimes they don't give me. What do you want me to pray for? How can I know or how can God know what you're asking for unless you verbalize that and tell people? And so it's not a helpful prayer to just take a list of people and say, I pray for Auntie Sue and I pray for this one, I pray for that one. What are you praying? What are you wanting God to do in their lives? And so in the book of James, the letter to James, James chapter 5 verse 16, it says, Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. And what is encouraging us to do is to be intentional in praying, not just to, to pray and say, I'd like this person to have a blessing. But what is that blessing? Christians who develop this habit start to pray and start to think deeper about people. And they start to see more miracles because that is a very effective prayer. My mother-in-law was a very, very amazing Christian. And she wanted to pray for her children to find the right spouses. Now, she didn't just say, I want them to have a wife or a husband. She started to think who they were and what they needed and started to pray very, very specifically. I know this because when she met me, she recognized me from her prayers and welcomed me into the family. This is powerful prayer. Can you imagine what our church would be like if we all prayed like this, if we stopped and prayed for each other in the service, not just from the front, but to just pray for the people around you. Yes, it might be intimidating for some people, but to ask that question, what can I pray for you? And it does say there that sometimes we need to confess our sins to one another. To find that one person you trust who won't judge you for your sin, but help you find forgiveness. A church that prays for each other will be a church that is growing. And so I encourage you today to get a little booklet. Maybe get some pictures or Facebook or something like that. And to put the pictures of the people you love in that book. And then start to write a prayer for them. Asking what you would like God to do in their life. And keep on praying. Because God has a way of answering those prayers. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we want to learn today to pray for one another. And let us start small and just choose five people, Lord, and start to pray specifically and grow from there. Praying in full confidence that you hear the prayers of our hearts. And sometimes when we just pray a prayer and say we pray for Tom, we're not sure. You're not sure how to answer that prayer. But when we really pray specifically, you know exactly how to bless them through our words. We pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.